Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. NPTEL lectures on the calculus of variations. This is the third lecture of the series. Here we continue with our uh, discussions on preliminaries, which will be required subsequently in our analysis of various problems of the calculus of variations. Uh, we started in the last lecture uh, with uh, certain concepts on uh, continuity, differentiability and piecewise continuity, piecewise differentiability and uh, representation of uh, various curves uh, in three dimension uh, as their parametric representations. Here we had started with uh, various concepts of uh, piecewise continuity, where we have uh, in a finite interval uh, in a length of uh, in uh, an interval of finite length, there can be only finitely many points of discontinuities and uh, at those points of discontinuities left and right derivatives exist and uh, they may differ by certain amount which is called the jump of the discontinuity at that point of discontinuity. Uh, similarly, here we, so a piecewise continuous function can look like uh, this that there are for example, in this case there are two points of discontinuity and uh, here left limit at this point A of the function will exist. Similarly, right limit when you approach to this point from the right, uh, the right limit will exist and this will be this point, uh, the value of the function at that point uh, from the right. Similarly, here the left limit will be this and right limit will be this and so there is a gap here and that is what is the jump uh, of the discontinuity at the points of discontinuity. We then uh, define the partial derivatives of uh, function of several variables, where uh, the variables itself are then functions of uh, some m variables t 1, t 2, t m and uh, the partial derivative was defined in this manner. And when the uh, these variables are functions of single variable, then uh, the this partial derivative uh, reduces to the ordinary derivative and it is given by uh, this sum. Uh, then we had the notion of differentiation of an integral, definite integral, where the limits are functions uh, of a variable say t and then the integrand is function of several variables like here, there are two variables, x is the variable of integration and t is the variable here, which is appearing as a parameter and so this integral will be function of this parameter t. And so, we can consider the differentiation of this integral i t with respect to the variable t and it is given by this Leibniz rule, which was proved in the last lecture in this manner. And then uh, the another concept of integration by parts was discussed, where we use the uh, this fact that uh, f into g uh, prime is f prime g plus f g prime and then integrating it over the interval x 1 to x 2 gives us this integration by parts formula, which will be very useful in our analysis. Then we consider the function of several variables, uh, where function f is there are n variables x 1, x 2, x n and u 1, u 2, u m and it is homogeneous of degree m in u 1, u 2, u m uh, if uh, this condition is satisfied. When you replace the variables u 1, u 2, u m by h u 1, h u 2, h u m, then that h to the power n comes out and then it is multiplied by f of x 1, x 2, x n and u 1, u 2, u m. This n is called the degree of homogeneity and Euler's theorem states that summation over j equal to 1 to m u j del f over del u j is n times f. Then we consider the Lagrange's method of undetermined multipliers lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda m. Here there is a function given of n variables which is to be optimized at uh, the points where uh, x 1, x 2, x n uh, can uh, they will also be uh, found out 
in the process and these numbers lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda m will also be obtained in the same process. So, these lambda j's j equal to 1 to m are actually unknown here and the points at which x 1, x 2, x n uh, where this f can attain minimum or maximum is also to be found out. So, this is a process of Lagrange's multipliers method. These, uh, met, uh, these uh, multipliers lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda m are called Lagrange's multipliers and they are also unknown in this process and they are to be obtained. So, that is why we call it undetermined multipliers. Then we uh, went on to discuss the line integrals, it is a generalization of the integral o integration over an interval a to b f x dx. Here uh, we take in uh, uh, general uh, r n, here n equal to 3 in particular will be our r 3, 3 dimensional x y z space and here we consider a curve c which is uh, piecewise smooth means that it is a continuous and uh, here a derivative is actually having jump uh, discontinuities of first kind. So, this curve c can be represented parametrically like this x of x t y y of t and z equal to z of t where t ranges between a to b. Then uh, how we define this uh, line integral, uh, integral f x y f x y z d s where s uh, here is arc length. So, in general we will take a parameter t like this f of x y z d t. This line integral in particular will reduce to uh, this when we take t equal to s as uh, s is the arc length uh, which is measured from a fixed point of the distance along this curve of the point p measured from a fixed point uh, on the curve. So, here in general we will take parameter t and uh, when we want to take s as the parameter we replace t by s here. So, this can be defined like this, we partition this interval a to b in n uh, sub intervals and the magnitude or the norm of this partition is defined mod p n, uh, maximum of uh, mod t j minus t j minus 1, j running from 1 to n. So, when this maximum length goes to 0, if this lim uh, limit of this sum s n, which is defined f of x j j, y j j, z j j, where j j is a point in the sub interval t j minus 1 to t j multiplied by here uh, by the length t j minus t j minus 1. If this sum is having a limit as uh, the number of partitions increase and this it is independent of the partition p n considered here, it does not matter which way we take these uh, points on this as long as we see that the maximum uh, length of uh, these sub intervals go to 0. So, it should not happen because why we want this maximum length? So, so that we should not partition only certain intervals and leaving the others. We should partition all the sub intervals and so that the maximum length goes to 0. Under that condition, if the limit of this sum exists, we say that uh, this line integral exists and denote it by f x y, the x y z are functions of t here and this f x y z d t is defined as the limit of this sum. So, in particular if you take s here, then uh, parameter t as s, then we can consider this integral f x y z here, then x y z will be functions of s and here d s we know that uh, this d s uh, arc length is given by See, d s square is d x square plus d y square plus d z square. So, here when we take x as a function of t, y as a function of t, z as a function of t, then we can have d s over d t whole square is d x over d t whole square, d y by d t whole square plus d z by d t whole square. And so, d s is, it can be seen that this is equal to square root of uh, this quantity. So, there are other kinds of line integrals also can be considered like when we take x itself as parameter or y itself as parameter or z itself as that parameter, then we take here this integral 
f x y z d x similarly f x y z d y f x y z d z and these can be seen that can be written like this f x y z d x by d t times d t here and so this is uh, like some other function here which can be considered as g x y z d t. So, this is a particular case of what we have already considered. So, all these uh, line integrals are particular cases of the one which we have already considered. More general form of the line integral is considered in this way that we take the sum of all these here f is replaced by f 1, f 2, f 3 respectively and then uh, we sum these terms up and it can be seen that this is actually the vector form of the line integral given by uh, integral over c f r d r. Here f is a vector valued function given by uh, this which has components f 1, f 2, f 3. I j k's are uh, the unit vectors along the coordinate axis and uh, radius uh, the position vector r is given by which is actually uh, this directed vector O p and so this position vector of p is given by x i y z plus z k where x y z are the coordinates of the point p. So, uh, this d r the element length uh, vector uh, element can be given by d x i d y z plus d z k and so f r dot d r can be seen that this is actually the same thing here f 1 d x plus f 2 d y plus f 3 d z which is the same thing which we had here on the left side left hand side of uh, this equation. In particular if we take here this uh, line integral i uh, where we take f 1 equal to minus y by 2 and f 2 equal to uh, x by 2 and f 3 equal to 0, we see that this line integral triple star reduces to this i equal to half of integral over here. C is a closed curve and uh, we are taking the direction, uh, the positive direction as anti clockwise direction here in this way. And uh, so, the uh, when we have a closed curve, we write to distinguish it from the other integrals, uh, we write O here in this to denote that this uh, integration is over a closed curve. And so, uh, we have in this particular case f 1 equal to minus y by 2. So, this is written here uh, 1 by 2 minus y dx and f 2 is x by 2. So, 1 by 2 x dy is written here and f 3 is 0. And uh, we will see that this is actually gives us a convenient way of uh, finding areas of various domains in two dimensional plane which is actually given by d x d y integration over d which is the area of d. Here this can be seen from the Green's theorem which is established here. Here uh, Green's theorem first we established in a very uh, specified uh, special region and then extended to other complicated regions. Here we assumed that uh, any vertical line or horizontal line the lines parallel to the coordinate axis cross the boundary of the area uh, at most at two points. So, like here this line cuts this area only at this point. Similarly, here from B the vertical line cuts this C boundary of this area at one point and in any interior uh, here it cuts at these two points this boundary C. So, there are at most two points common with the vertical line or horizontal line with the boundary of this d that is the c curve c. So, for this particular uh, case we have seen that it can be uh, the Green's theorem can be stated here and proved like this m d x plus n d y integration over the closed curve c is actually n x minus m y d x d y. Here it is, uh, so if you take this term m y d x d y integration over d can be seen by in iterated integrals like this. And so, this differentiation and integration cancel each other and so we get the values of m at the boundary curves like this and uh, ad adjusting this minus sign with the direction of the uh, integration 
So, this minus a to b gives you b to a of m d x. Similarly, the second term gives you minus minus becomes plus here. So, it gives you a to b m uh, d x and collectively if we see the directions, then we get the integration over the whole curve c of m d x. Similarly, we can see the second term n x d x d y will come out to be n d y integration over the closed curve c. So, that establishes the Green's theorem for this particular region and then we extend it to more uh, complicated region like if you have the whole line segment common with the vertical line or horizontal line, then it can be extended because here d x becomes 0. So, it does not matter here this contribution uh, along this curve uh, integration will be 0. So, it actually reduces to the earlier case in these two particular cases and then you extend it for more complicated region here like this and subdivide this region into simple regions like the one we have earlier and then add up and then the artificial boundaries in introduced here, the integration over the, uh, those boundaries will be cancelling. When you take like here, you go like this anticlockwise and when you go in D 3 anticlockwise like this, then here integration once you get in this direction and then next time the direction is reversed. So, they cancel each other. Similarly, along any interior boundary which we introduced artificially integration so cancel and so we get uh, the Green's theorem extended to more complicated regions. So, now to see that our result that it is this is gives you the area over this d d x d y here we take n x. So, recall that uh, what we have is from Gage's theorem here uh, we take n x equal to. Uh, so, if we write this integral over closed curve C m d x plus n d y equal to double integral over d this n x minus m y d x d y. So, here we can take n x equal to x and so take n x equal to x and m uh, sorry n, n equal to n equal to x and m equal to minus y. So, then we see that uh, the right hand side or left hand side reduces to x d y. So, n is x. So, x d y minus y d x or rather we take Okay, so, this will be equal to double integral over d and so you get uh, n x becomes 1 here. So, you get twice uh, d x d y. So, taking this 2 here, we can see that half of this x d y minus y d x is actually integral o over d d x d y which is which gives us the area of d. So, that formula will be very convenient here for the problem of optimization for the problem of the calculus of variations where we have a double integral we can reduce by this to integration over a curve which is actually the boundary of that region. So, next we will be considering the concept of a directional derivative. So, here in let us say first we do it for two dimension. So, here we have certain region d here and here function u is defined. So, u x y is defined here and we want to see that. So, normal here will be like this outward normal n cap. So, n cap 
will be having like this n cap equal to n 1 i plus n 2 j. So, this n has two components n 1 in the this direction n 1 i and this n 2 j. So, these are the components of this n like this unit normal. So, in the x y direction we have these components n 1 and n 2 of this uh, normal. So, here this is actually like if we take this direction as the positive direction the uh, counter clockwise we know that then the tangent will be like this at this point. So, tangent can also be here can be seen it is uh, components in x y directions like this and like this. And so, this if we denote t cap as the unit tangent then we know that t cap dot n cap is 0 because they are orthogonal to each other. So, we want to find uh, the derivative of this u x y in this direction uh, n which is known as the derivative of u in the normal direction. So, that is what we are going to consider the it is called normal derivative rather than directional derivative in the normal direction. So, we will write it rather normal derivative instead of you can consider uh, differentiation in any direction. So, in particular we will take normal derivative. the derivative in the direction of normal so, outward normal here. So, similar here you can have the inward normal like this. So, if uh, n is the outward normal minus n is the inward normal. So, we take only the outward normal here. So, w, uh, this u need not be defined outside. So, how we define uh, this along this uh, actually we take a point x dash y dash inside and then consider this limit limit delta n. Delta n is the distance along uh, this normal limit delta n tending to 0 of u x y minus u x dash y dash upon delta n and it is denoted as uh, delta u by delta n. So, this is the definition of the normal derivative. Here, it is at the point x y actually. So, x dash y dash is going to. Uh, so, x dash y dash is a point here on the normal inside in the region, uh, because outside we cannot take point uh, since u is not defined there. Usually, you will take uh, when you are taking along this derivative along this, you will take a point here and then pass it to the point x y. Since, we cannot take points outside we will take points inside because u is defined only on d. So, we have to take points only inside d. So, here uh, we take x dash y dash on this normal uh, extend it inside and we consider this difference. So, that is why we have taken x y u at x y minus u of x dash y dash instead of u at x dash y dash minus u x y. So, if we take u of x dash y dash minus u x y over delta n and delta n tends to 0 that will give you the derivative along this direction. So, minus of that will give you derivative along the outward normal. So, that is what we have done here. Now, this can be seen uh, this will be actually equal to gradient of u dot n cap where n cap is this outward unit normal which here de, uh, gradient is actually del u by del x i plus del u by del y j and you have this normal n 1 cap i plus n 2 cap j. So, this gives you a convenient way of finding this normal derivative instead of using the definition. We just take the uh, gradient of u and then uh, take the dot product with uh, the outward normal unit normal and so that is what gives you the normal derivative along the outward normal. How do we see this? Because you can do it like this that limit delta. So, this thing can be seen that this is equal to limit delta n tending to 0 u 
x y minus u x dash y over x minus x dash and then x minus x dash over delta n plus u of x dash y minus u of x dash y dash over x over y minus y dash to y minus y dash over delta n. Now, here when we take this del u over del x that is actually x dash y minus u of x y and x dash minus x. So, you can multiply by minus up and down. So, it is just the same thing. So, and here this will give you. So, this will be simply when it pass to the limit you get del u over del x at x y and you get uh, this. This is the normal derivative. So, this will be like d x by d n and plus del u by del y. So, this in the limit you get del u by del y and then d y by d n. Now, here how to see that these are actually n 1, n 2. Here we see that the tangent at any point here, if you have the curve going like this, this is the positive direction. So, at this point tangent t cap is this. So, if you take s as the arc length, then this t cap. So, here if you take first this position vector r function of s. So, you have x s i plus y s j. So, this is the position vector like this and when p moves here it is actually a function of s and so this o p can be seen like this that is the position vector here. So, these components x and y are functions of the arc length and so we know that this t cap that, that is d r by d s the unit tangent vector given like this x dash s i plus y dash s j and so the this is here so if you take so this is x s and this is y s component here x dash s and y dash s here. So, these are the components of the tangent vector and so uh, here we know that uh, t dot n cap is uh, if this slope of t. So, slope of t is y dash s upon x dash s and so slope of normal the slope of n cap will be like plus minus x dash s over rather minus of this minus x just uh, reverse of this with the negative sign y dash because you know that m m dash equal to minus 1 for orthogonal lines. If m is the slope of line and uh, orthogonal to this slope has m dash then we know that m m dash equal to minus 1. So, using that you can see that the slope of this n cap is minus x dash y dash. So, uh, minus x dash over y dash. So, here these components will change with the one of them becoming minus. So, which one to take minus will be seen that see this uh, normal is along this direction now and so its x component is in the same direction which is actually uh, positive here both x and x dash and y dash both are along positive directions. So, normal only y component will change its sign and for this normal n cap here you can see that this uh, for the tangent it is up. So, for normal it is going down whereas, 
x components remains in the same direction. So, we can see that n cap then can be written as here x component becomes y component of t. So, y dash s i and then this y component goes in the other direction. So, this becomes minus x dash s j. So, that is what is the outward normal and so we can see that this actually comes out to be. So, here we can see that this will be now del u by del x. So, x component here is y dash. So, uh, y dash s minus del u over del y and y component is minus because of that we get minus here x dash s. So, this gives you a convenient way of finding the directional derivative. Next, we consider the concept regarding the matrices and determinants. So, here and in terms of determinants certain Jacobians will also be considered. Uh, these Jacobians will be uh, involving certain uh, transformations of variables and so they will be the determinant uh, determinants of certain uh, certain matrices which uh, get we get from uh, considering various transformations from one space to another. So, here we know that this uh, determinant is defined like this. Supposing you have a matrix of n by n size like this a i j n by n. These a i j's are real numbers. We are considering only real matrices here and here for n equal to 2, for n equal to 2 we have a as a 1 1, a 1 2, a 2 1 a 2 2 and so determinant we denote here it does not mean it is a absolute value actually or let us use the other notation it might confuse with the absolute value. So, let us use d e t that det here determinant of a is given as a 1 1 a 2 2 minus a 1 2 a 2 1. So, it is actually cross multiplied like this a 1 1 into a 2 2 minus a 1 2 into a 2 1 like this. So, for uh, n equal to 3 we extend it like this. If you have a like this a 1 1 a 1 2 a 1 3 a 2 1 a 2 2 a 2 3 a 3 1 a 3 2 a 3 3. So, uh, so determinant of a will be given like this a 1 1 times here determinant of the lower order 1. So, here this also another notation here like this a 1 1, a 1 2, a 2 1, a 2 2 like this two between two parallel lines like this. When we take these brackets then it is matrix, when we take these bars between these uh, then this denotes the determinant. So, here you get a 2 2 a 2 3 and a 3 2 a 3 3 and then uh, here minus. So, the indices are 1 1. So, i plus j is even when i plus j is odd uh, we get minus sign. So, minus a 1 2 and then crossing out uh, this row and this column. So, we are left with those entries put those entries here a 2 1, a 2 3 and a 3 1, a 3 3. Then plus because now 3 plus 1 is 4. So, we get plus sign here a 1 3 and then leaving crossing out this row and this column. So, we have a 2 1, a 2 2, a 3 1, a 3 2. So, like this we extend. So, any nth order uh, determinant will be like this. So, if you have general a 1 1, a 1 2 and so on, a 1 n, a 2 1, 
a to 2 a 2 n and then a n 1 a n 2 so on a n n. So, like this we will have here if you see we can open along any row or any column using this rule that you take a plus sign when i plus j is 1 uh, i plus j is even and minus sign when i plus j is odd and then uh, crossing out that. So, a i j if the you are all have that entry then you remove i th row and j th column remaining one the lower order determinant you take. So, that is what we can do here a 1 1 and then this lower one a 2 2 a so on a 2 n and uh, a n 2 so on here a n n and then you get minus sign a 1 2 like that. So, removing this and this removing uh, the first row and second column like that the remaining ones we will put here uh, like a this is 2 1. So, a 2 1 a 2 n so on and a n 1 then leaving this one and you get a n n so on we get and then plus minus plus minus so on and then here you will get minus 1 to the power 1 plus n that a 1 n and then the determinant of the these entries put here a 2 1 and then a 2 n minus 1 and then so on a n 1 and then up to a n n minus 1. So, that is how you define the determinants of various square matrices. Now, these are uh, used in order to solve the linear equations like this if a if a is m by n matrix and then uh, you take x as the uh, n dimensional vector x 1 x 2 x n transpose taking as row vector uh, and then b as b 1 b 2 b m transpose transpose means you ta uh, take the row vector uh, as column vector. So, you x transpose will then be written in a column x 1 x 2 x n this will be actually written like this x 1 x 2 x n same way this transpose will be written as b 1 b 2 b m. Then one can consider this system a x equal to b. So, given b you find x such that this uh, system of linear equations this is a system of m linear equations in n variables So, in expanded form it is like this a 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2 so on plus a 1 n x n equal to b 1 and then a 2 1 x 1 plus a 2 2 x 2 plus a 2 n x n equal to b 2 and then this is m at a m 1 x 1 plus a m 2 x 2 plus so on plus a m n x n equal to b m. So, this is a system of m linear equations in n unknowns x 1 x 2 x n where the right hand side b 1 b 2 b m is a given vector. So, uh, a i j's are known a i j's are known a i j and b j are known. We are to find 
this x 1, x 2 and x n are to be found. Now, here we know that if we consider this matrix A, this is actually A i j m by n. So, we have concept of rank of the matrix that means these rows. So, R j R i row is uh, A i 1, A i 2, A i n. This is the ith row and similarly, you have C j column that is uh, C 1 j, C 2 j and C m j. So, i equal to 1 2 to m and j equal to 1 2 to n. So, these are m rows and n columns here. This row r i these m rows span the row space. So, uh, the span row space is called the span of r 1, r 2, r m and column space span of C 1, C 2, C n. Now, we see that here these two spaces are different spaces, but they have the same dimension that the row space. Uh, if there are uh, r linearly independent uh, vectors, then uh, if row space if the dimension of row space is r, then we have r 1 certain r uh, number of row vectors as linearly independent vectors and we see that these and out of these c 1, c 2, c n, there will be then only r number of. So, this is also equal to uh, the dimension of column space. So, these two spaces which are actually generated by taking the linear combinations of rows, uh, rows of this matrix and same time taking the uh, row, uh, column space that is the space generated by the columns c 1, c 2, c n. Uh, it happens that it has this uh, these two spaces have the same dimension r and it is that is what is called the rank of rank of a. So, rank is uniquely defined it is the uh, number of uh, linearly independent row vectors which is also same. Uh, this number is same as the uh, number of column so in linearly independent columns. Independence means here see these vectors x 1, x 2, x n or let us say x k are linearly independent if this alpha 1 x 1 plus alpha 2 x 2, this is the linear combination alpha k x k 0 implies alpha 1 equal to 0, alpha 2 equal to 0 and so on alpha k equal to 0. If you can find alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha k such that at least one of them is non-zero and this linear combination is 0, then uh, we say that x 1, x 2, x k are linearly dependent. So, either this set is linearly dependent or linearly independent. So, when you cannot find non-zero alpha is such that this linear combination is equal to 0. That means, if you consider any combination like this, then it implies that these alpha i's are 0. Then we say that these x 1, x 2, x k are uh, linearly independent. And so, here uh, by this uh, the since the dimension of row space is r. So, the we will have r linearly independent rows uh, of the matrix A. Similarly, we will have r linearly independent columns out of those n columns here out of those m rows certainly r has to be less than equal to 
if a matrix A is non zero, certainly this is to be greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to minimum of m and n because there are m rows. So, dimension cannot be greater than m and there are n rows. So, dimension cannot be greater than n. So, it will be minimum, uh, it will be less than the minimum of those m n and uh, if uh, matrix A is non zero, then at least there is one non zero row and therefore, the dimension is at least 1. So, by this we see that this system system of linear equation. So, we will say this as L e linear equations L e is rather. So, this L e is has a solution if and only if the rank of rank of A is same thing as uh, rank of the augmented matrix A B. So, here this is the augmented matrix, we put a bracket for the augmented matrix. So, that means here you have augmented matrix means you have A here that A 1 1 A so on A 1 n and then put this B 1 here and A 2 1 so on A 2 n and B 2 A n m 1 a m n and b m. So, that is the augmented matrix. So, since again here it cannot be uh, the rank of the augmented matrix cannot be larger than m, but uh, it can if r is smaller than m then uh, it might be that the rank might increase. So, if the rank increases obviously, then we will not have any solution because it is if and only if. So, if the rank of A is same thing as rank of the augmented matrix that means, if you adjoin this uh, column it rank does not increase then it, it will be having a solution. And uh, here when we have m equal to n then we have a square matrix with size of n by n and then in that case uh, we can have this then a x equal to b then b also uh, the size of b is also n and uh, in this case this has a unique solution if and only if the determinant of this now we can consider determinant because it is a square matrix and therefore if the determinant of uh, this uh, is non zero then rather we are using not the determinant of A is not 0, then this has unique solution. And if determinant, if determinant of A is 0, then this homogeneous equation A x equal to 0 has a non trivial solution, has a non zero. solution. So, that is the thing here. So, these two are associated A x equal to B when B is not 0, when we take B equal to 0, this is the associated homogeneous system for this non homogeneous system. And so, if this has only uh, 0 solution, then uh, this A x equal to B, we can summarize it like this that we have A x equal to B and then the associated homogeneous system is A x equal to this 0. So, if unique solution solution if and only if this has this has unique solution if and only if this homogeneous system has x equal to 0 x equal to 0 is anyway solution is the only solution. And if 
this uh, if uh, if this has a non trivial solution then if x 0 has a non zero solution then a x equal to b has either no solution or infinitely many solutions. So, that is the case here in this case, uh, when we have uh, a x equal to 0, if it has a only trivial solution, then the non homogeneous has a unique solution and when this has a non trivial solution, then it ca uh, this non homogeneous one cannot have a solution in general or if it has a solution, it will have infinite many solutions. Now, uh, here we consider certain transformations, supposing we consider uh, the nth order partial uh, nth order ordinary differential equation. O d linear So, you have we will consider the highest derivative coefficient of highest order derivative as 1. If it is something here, let us say p n x plus p n minus 1 y n minus 1 and so on plus p 0 y equal to r x. So, this is a linear non homogeneous equation. If r x equal to 0, then we have homogeneous equation. If r x is identically 0, we get this this O d linear O d like this, then is called homogeneous now if this p n x so this is to be considered on certain interval uh, like this a less than equal to x less than b now if p x is not equal to 0 for all x in a b then L O D linear uh, nth order O D given here is called regular. If otherwise, if P n x is 0 at x equal to a, x equal to b or for any c in open interval a b, then L O d is called singular. Like you have uh, Lysander equation or Bessel equation. So, we will consider these kind of equations and their solutions next time and uh, so thank you very much for viewing this lecture attentively.